My name is Kim Smith, and I'm Layla's great great aunt. <coughs> that may sound like a very distant relative, but believe me, it was not. I wasn't there when Layla was born, but within a year, she became a very bright, but least sweet addition to my life. I am the last relative besides Millie that saw her and held her for the last time that she was alive. That day will haunt me forever. I saw something in her eyes that wasn't quite right, but I didn't act because I didn't know. Just the fact that the girls were in foster care impacted our family. It was dysfunctional at best. The girls were moved from pillar to post over and over. So when the Rosenbaums were to get the girls, we really did think that it would be a stable situation until our family could get them back. Fast forward to November 17, 2015, the death of Layla and the trauma for Millie. Then the details begin to surface. We mourned Layla and we mourned with, Lil with Millie. The media attention, we didn't ask for that. It was pushed upon us. Our family didn't want a civil case with defects. We wanted our Layla back. Lawyers, district attorneys, judges, all coming and going and changing. The case being scheduled and delayed again and again. This has been weighing heavy on our hearts for four and a half years. From now on, we'll refer to our life before Layla died or after Layla died. We've had many people pray for our family, some from all over the world. Most all people you meet are disgraced by anyone that would harm an innocent child, much less beat a child until her internal organs tear and bleed and her bones break. To traumatize a child while she witnesses this happening to her sister, knowing it would happen to her as well. Jennifer and Joseph, you not only killed Layla and traumatized Millie for the rest of her life, you also broke the hearts of everyone that knew her and the hearts of your family as well. In my deepest time of grief and despair, I pleaded with God to let me just see Layla again. I didn't want to remember her lifeless, unrecognizable body in that baby coffin. That could not be my last memory of her. That night, Jesus gave me the sweetest dream of Layla in heaven. Layla's body is perfect now, just the way God created her to be. Oh, her hair is healthy again, not straw-like and falling out. It is shiny and longer now, like Millie's. And when she runs in the meadows of wildflower, it bounces. There is yummy food there, and she can eat it whenever she wants. There are ponies and puppies there, and kittens too. And Jesus always has time to play with her. There is so much love and happiness. There is no room for anger or bitterness. Everyone there is like family. But she really does have family there. Lots and lots of family. And she can't wait till the rest of us get there. Layla is in heaven waiting for all of us. Thank you to everyone that prayed for my family. Jesus heard every prayer, and he comforted and loved on and provided peace to all that simply asked. Jennifer and Joseph, forgiveness has taken the place of hate and bitterness in my heart. However, we all must pay the consequences of sins, and according to the laws of this land, punishment of murder must be met. You have been found guilty, and I pray that you are punished to the full extent of the law. I also pray for your souls. To this day, I have not seen one ounce of remorse, one ounce of acknowledgement to the horror that you put these girls through. Yes, God will have the final judgment, and may he have mercy on your soul. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.